Thank you for attending another episode of IntentWise Connect webinars. Happy to see you all here. I am filling in for Srinath Reddy, our CEO, who had a unexpected personal matter to attend to today. So I will be stepping in to host today's session. We're super happy to have Gwen McShay from President of Lean Edge Marketing with us today. She's going to walk us through today's agenda, which is packed full of a tons of tips for mastering your Amazon content. So uh, super excited to have you with us, Gwen. Um, Thank you for having me. Definitely. Go ahead and take it away and let's go jump into today's presentation. All right. We have a lot to cover today. So forgive me if we speak quickly or don't pause very long on any particular thing. But today we wanted to talk a little bit about a marketer's guide to mastering Amazon content. A little bit of background about our agency. Our agency has been around since 2018. We were founded by and continue to be run by seasoned e-commerce professionals. Most of the people on our team have between 20 and 30 years of digital marketing e-commerce experience. So we're a pretty seasoned bunch. Um, we provide creative services, account management, advertising services for Amazon sellers and vendors. We work probably with around 70 plus Amazon sellers at this point in time. Um, we are an Amazon ads verified partner and a buy with prime partner. Um, myself, I've been in digital marketing e-commerce for about 25 years now. I've been on Amazon for over eight years. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration and a bachelor's degree in fine arts. And I've worked on both sides of the equation. So I've worked in agencies and I've worked for sellers. So today's agenda, um, we're going to cover a couple of different areas. We're going to talk first about why you should invest in content. Then we're going to jump into the meat and potatoes, which is product images, A plus content, brand stories, Amazon posts, video ads, brand stores, and measuring success. So why should you invest in Amazon content? Well, um, Provatero did a nice little study at the end of last year where they showed the lift you get to sales traffic and conversion rate when you add videos or when you add two to eight images, I really should say, or adding enhanced content. Um, and as you can see, that's a pretty substantial lift. Um, improving your content boosts your click-through rate. It boosts your conversion rate. It drives sales. It improves your bestseller rank. It can improve your brand awareness and the brand trust that people have with you if you do it correctly. Um, the other thing it does, and we're going to talk about this in just a second, is it decreases your competitor real estate on your product detail pages. This is a typical Amazon listing if you don't really have that much content on your page. Everything you see in pink are competitor ads. So in a typical page like this, there's very little that's about your product and a whole lot that's about other people's products. So it's a great opportunity for all of those people to steal um, your sales after all the hard work you've done to get them to your page. This is a Magic Spoon page. They've been optimizing all their product content. Um, and they've also been taking all the advertising the prime advertising slots on their own page. So that's why you see some advertising spots that aren't highlighted. Because of that, you will see that they have really driven down um, the amount of space that their advertisers are getting on their product detail page. And most of it is occurring at the very bottom of the page. Um, just a little reminder for IntentWise who's hosting this, they do have a tool, um, the content analytics tool that you can use to jump in and from an algorithmic point, see which pieces of your content are missing. It's really good if you have a large catalog and you need to quickly point out to yourselves maybe which content A plus isn't applied to um, or which content is missing images, those types of things. It also does um, title length and bullet points and those kind of things. All right, so we're gonna jump into product images. You know, this is where we're going to spend the, the heft of today because it's such an important part of you know, the sales process. Um, but when you're in, when somebody searches, you know, keyword driven search for a product on Amazon, they're going to get a, a search results page and it's going to have a whole bunch of images on it. And, you know, one of the things you want to do is the first thing people are going to be driven by is what is that image and does it elicit the click? Does it gain somebody's attention and cause them to click through onto your listing? And you can see a whole bunch of different options in a seasonal item like pencils for school. Um, the leading one, Amazon's Choice, really isn't the best image on the page, but it's an Amazon basic product. So it's getting lift from other places. But you can 
already start to see what drives your attention on this page. On a typical product detail page, you can have between five and nine images. Sometimes on Vendor Central, you'll see them go way up. You know, I've seen Vendor Central clients have like 20. Um, but for the most part, we can upload on Seller Central up to nine images in most categories. Typically, five are visible on desktop if you have a video. Um, six are visible on desktop without a video. To access the other ones, you have to um, zoom into the image and click onto it, and that's where you can see your additional images and videos. Um, five images are typically available on the mobile app. So again, going back to Profitero, they also examined what is the lift that you get by adding basically two to four images or five to eight images. And as you can see, there is a very substantial lift in sales, traffic, and conversion rate. Um, the one caveat that I will add to this is that if you're not driving traffic to your listing in any other way, if there's nobody um, coming to your product detail page, if you're not advertising, if nobody knows about your brand, if you're not sending it out to an email list or anything like that, you can improve all the content you want and it's not going to make any difference. It only makes a difference once you start to, to improve that bestseller rank um, and you're doing all those other activities under the marketing scope. But if you are this stuff should have a big impact. And the more traffic that you are getting, the bigger the impact will be. Um, the first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is keep up to date with Amazon's image roles and category guidelines. Um, the category guidelines were really outdated that Amazon had up. Uh, and when I went to look for them to put them in here, they have just recently disappeared. So uh, I don't know that they'll be posting new ones or if you know there's a link that they'll bring them back, um, but there are, some new rules. They've recently made some updates. It's good to click in and see what they are currently saying you can and can't do. General things that we want to go over are, I'm sorry, the don'ts. Um, some of these are Amazon rules. Some of these are just bad practice. But Amazon requires that a main image is going to be on a white background. So you can't take an image um, on a static background like this. You can't have background material like this. There are categories that have exceptions. Um, such as I think furniture is one of them, but for the most part, you can't have background images. Amazon says you cannot have text, logo, graphics, or watermarks in your main image. So anytime you see people trying to squeeze this stuff in, it's a no-no. It means that your listing can be suppressed, even if it hasn't already been, or you see other people doing it, um, or it could list, end up with your listing being suppressed. More often than not, it's an image suppression but you need to know that. You're not supposed to put models in your images aside from clothing. It's another reason you can get your listing suppressed. This one's kind of an important one. They don't want you to have any image props in your image. So what their intention behind this is, is that the customer is going to be upset because there's something they see in the image that they don't receive in real life. So there you'll see some interpretation of this from sellers where, you know, for instance, if they're selling a strawberry flavored drink, they might put a strawberry behind there. Technically, it's not allowed, but I don't think most people would interpret that they're going to get a fresh strawberry with a strawberry drink. Um, so, you know, that's kind of in the gray area, but these types of things here where you're seeing bowls of food in them, a brush, an uh, accessory, you know, most people would be confused about what they are getting and what are they are not getting in that particular image. Um, on the blanket, you're not getting that teddy bear with this blanket, so you shouldn't be in the image. Um, this is one you see commonly less than you used to, but it's still out there. Improperly sized images. So somebody didn't upload an image that's at least 1500 by 1500 pixels. We tend to do 2000 by 2000, so that's really crisp and clear without getting to be too large of a file size. Um, and then you want it to occupy at least 85% of the space of that image. Quality. So don't use images that are improperly lit. They're too bright, they're too dark, or that the text is illegible on it. You want the customer to read everything on that, so it's something that you should pay attention to. Resizing images. So you'll see some people um, resize images without keeping the resizing proportional. Um, as in the instance of this detergent. 
that's something you don't want to do because it destroys the quality of your image. Another thing is don't take a picture of a, a wrinkled package or something that you can't read the text on it. Um, it just looks really not professional and it's not something that engages somebody in wanting to purchase your product. Main image quality. Another thing, don't put too many things in your images. You know, being able to display everything that you're getting without overwhelming a customer and confusing them about what they're going to get is important. Letting them see it, making it legible and understandable is so important. And, you know, there might be a little bit of art involved in this that you might need to work with a photographer or graphic designer to get right. Um, it might take some trial and error, but don't do this where, you know, the image on the right, I have no idea. You're getting a lot of stuff, but I don't know what that stuff is in it. Um, another one, you know, if you don't want to be listed as adult content, don't put anything that is suggestive in the photo. It's a no-no from Amazon. Um, they're really touchy about it. Another thing is don't use poor quality photos or blank packaging. You know, I have no idea what the text on the image on the left is, and I have no idea what the item, I think it's some sort of energy bar that's on the right. <laughs> um, it's really becomes mystery meat to the customer as well as yourself. So what are your goals when you have a main image? You wanna attract a click, you wanna build a strong brand impression, you wanna depict the quality and contents, you know, how many of what is somebody receiving? Um, you wanna inform and educate the customer as best you can, and you wanna inspire them to purchase your product. So for each of the areas, we're gonna to try to talk a little bit about the anatomy of a good uh, content, piece of content. On this one, we have an image of the Nerf dog squeak toy. It's using up 85% or more of the space. It's a high res image. It clearly displays and reinforces the brand. You have, and I have it down here too. They have the brand on the product itself. They have the brand on the packaging. They use it to talk about who is the target customer. They snuck in the dogs. They tell you it's got a squeaker. Um, and if you look at a page of search results on these types of toys, it stands out from the other products on that page. This is just a generic thing for jump rope. You can kind of see which one's the best seller. And by looking at it, you can tell why that item is the best seller. They did the best job on the main image. Um, this is another one with batting gloves. There's a couple of gloves that stand out. This one, the hands are positioned differently. This one's a bright color. This one, they, again, position the hand differently. They have a bottom and a top, and the, it's a different orientation. And you'll notice that some of those items are the best sellers on this page, regardless of price points, regardless of um, brand names. So build a strong product image, uh, a broad, strong brand impression. So these are two images that I just love that are out there. Um, I think both of them did a really good job. On the left, we have the chomps. Right away, you know exactly how many items it is because we as humans tend to associate things in groups of five. So five of them have the packaging peeled, five of them don't. We know immediately you're getting 10 of them. It's got the brand. It shows you what's inside the package, what's outside the package. You can read the package. Um, and it's just a really great presentation of the product. On the right, we have a Dunlop boop. Um, Amazon's really strict about how shoes are displayed and you can't have any sort of packaging in it. So they were really clever and they put the brand name on the sole of the boot and on the side of it. And they positioned the photo just so that you know exactly who makes this boot and it makes stands out from the rest of the ones that you will see on that page. You'll see commonly that people try to put their product packaging on there. This is a really simple, um, packaging play for the iron flask. They have the packaging, they have the contents and the item, but it's very simple, it's very clean, it's very well designed. If you look at the Christmas cookie category, it's a mess. It's hard to see what you're gonna get for the most part, but Mrs. Fields really stood out because they use the, the lid to display their brand and they really showcase the variety of items that you're gonna get in that package. Um, here we see Thomas. They were one of the first people that I saw that did this, but they put an outer packaging on this to tell you right away that it's a value pack. They're telling you you're getting two items, you know, that they're 16 inch loaves, 
what the net weight is. And you can see that all right there. Um, Band-Aid put everything right on their package. So instead of showing you a whole bunch of different Band-Aids and different sizes, they made that part of their product packaging and then they can really blow it up. Having a really good square orientation to your content is important too, as long as Amazon keeps the square formatting. I have seen recently that they might be switching to kind of more of a mobile format, <laughs> but they haven't actually told us that yet. I'm just seeing them testing it. So be on the lookout, we might have to change our image orientation. Um, depicting the quality and quantity and contents. So another big thing that we talk about all the time is how many of something are you getting? If you just show one ST and you say it's a pack of 10, 20, um, the customer's not gonna understand that. They're gonna think your price point is high and you will not be optimizing your sales because they don't know how many they're getting. You wanna let customers know what they're getting, what brand it is, and make it look as attractive as possible. One of the things that we've been seeing a lot lately, and it's probably a little bit in the gray area, it's being pushed most heavily by big CPG brands right now, is they are taking like a cardboard box or the packaging, and they are kind of superimposing text on it to do call outs. So in this, you can see that you're getting 24, um, 8.4 fluid ounce drinks and the brand. On this one over here, they're showing that you're getting 100, it's 100% 100 bamboo, it's a six pack and they're jumbo rolls. So you're seeing more of that kind of stuff happening. A good example, if you want to search for yourself that I think is probably pushing it too far is if you go into the deodorant category, um, you'll see a lot of this really being pushed to the limits. Inspiring. So one of the things that this brand did first, and I'm sure there's start, people starting to mimic it, but Outdoor Master looked at the category ski goggles. And in it, most of them had different kind of tinted lenses. And it's a sea of goggles that look kind of the same, except the tint might be a different color per brand. And they said, wait a second, what does somebody really want to be doing? What's the aspiration of buying this product? Well, it's to be in an environment like this. So instead of showing you what tint color the glasses have, they showed you where you want to be um, in that particular image. The image on the right is a sea of um, outdoor um, barbecue. Um, <laughs> I'm losing the word for the moment. But at the time that they did this, nobody else, it was just black items um, and across the board. Nobody kind of gave, showed you the aspiration of what this product could do. They also, against Amazon's terms of service, do have a hand in it, which is technically a model, but it's telling you how big the item is as well. So in this case, I actually think it's more informative than anything else, and I think it would help them sell the product. So secondary images, so that's a whole different ball of wax. Um, you know, you have a lot more freedom in secondary images than you do in main images, but Typical goals for it are to reinforce your brand, to set proper customer expectations, to educate and differentiate your product, to compel a customer to purchase. Um, you want to keep it simple because this is going to be on mobile as well as desktop. So you want to make sure that it's legible at a small size. And you want to make sure that they know, if it is, that your brand is bigger than one product. So anatomy of a good image you want to use negative space. A negative space doesn't have to be white space, but it just means without something else going on. Um, you want large, easy to read text. If you're using icons, you want clear icons that make sense to support the text. You want sharp, high-res images. Um, and you want to keep reminding people throughout your images that what the product is and what the... Um, brand is. So always try to include a brand reminder. We have a bunch of different image types. We're going to walk through them. So the first one is features and benefits. You, a typical thing you'll see on Amazon is somebody will try to highlight the features and benefits of their product in their images. You try to do this. I, I could probably nitpick these ones. Legend on the one side does a really nice job. Their images are beautiful across the board. I think there's a little bit too much text on this. I think they would have been better if they didn't have the secondary text on it. 
primarily for mobile users. But otherwise, I think it's a home run. Middle one is good. It shows the product, the branding, and a couple of points. The one on the right, great. Big, beefy callouts for what's great about their product. They're just missing their logo. Size. So size is one of the number one customer complaints on Amazon. People get something and they will say, it's too big, it's too small. And it's something that is really hard as a digital marketer to convey to somebody what exactly is the size of this item when you can only see it digitally. So people spend a lot of time trying to convey that to the customer so that they reduce their return rates and they increase the, the feedback and scores that they get. So one of the things that you could do on a backpack is you can show it on a model. You know, explain how big that model is. They did a good job on the side. You can put the item next to an everyday object. So in it, you can use a quarter, you can use a phone, you can use a coffee mug. Um, a hand is a common item. You could do those things that a human can look at and immediately have a real idea of what size that item is. If you're selling jewelry, this is really important. You know, put it on the person's neck, put it on their wrist, show them what size that item is so that they're, they're not horrified when they get the item that it doesn't meet their expectations. Um, another thing, if you're selling any sort of clothing, you want sizing guides. How does somebody know how to measure this item? You know, you want to convey as much information you can so that they order the right size and reduce your return rates, which could be quite high in clothing. Um, secondary images, product specifications. So you'll see this a lot more with technical products or products that have to be installed or there are components. Um, but, you know, sometimes there's compatibility guides. You'll see this a lot with cell phone accessories, right? So they'll get into it and they will say, what size is this compatible with? And in this case, they showed you which ones it's not and which one it is. And they use graying out as a way to communicate that. And they also reinforced it with text. Um, there's probably too much information on the crafts, but I think it kind of hits the point that they told you what your minimum cabinet size is, how big the sink is going to be compared to your countertop, and then how deep is this item? What would actually fit in it? They're telling you a stock pot would fit in it or up to 30 plates. So that's giving you a lot of information so you can understand before you order this item and return it, what to expect. Um, secondary images. So these are always a good place. You can include lifestyle, you can include use photos, but you want them to kind of be aspirational. You want them to talk to your um, core desk customer demographic. You wanna be representative. You wanna make sure you have diversity in it. Um, you know, all of those kind of things that represent who you are, and what you're selling and how somebody might use this product. Good things to always keep in these images is your logo. You can have some call outs. You can drop in your product image over top of it, but keep it simple and use kind of aspirational stuff. Next one, product differentiation. So when we get into this, you want to say, um, our product is better than somebody else's. You cannot show brand X versus brand Y as they are named in their trademarks. What you can say is generally, here's another product or your average product. And this is how we differ from your average product. And here are some clever ways from High Key and Chomps how to do that. Um, product differentiation can also be, why is this product different than everything else in the market? The one in the beginning, they're telling you that this product lays flat so you can scan your devices going through TSA without taking them out of the bag. Your company story, your founder story. Tell people who's behind your brand and what are you about? Here are some good examples of how that was done. Product family. So I will um, put a little caveat on this. We are starting to see Amazon not expressly suppress this image, but not always approve it. Um, and the way you could tell is that they will duplicate one of your other images and not publish this one which is kind of a head scratcher because they're not telling you it's not really forbidden in the rules. But I think uh, both with this and when we get to A plus content, they are trying to move your product family type of images to the brand story. So I think it's kind of a move on their part to, to influence that. Um, but it's good for people to know, here's our product family, if you can get it approved. Um, and here's the item in that product family that you're receiving. 
So you want to actually differentiate the product that you're selling from the ones on this listing, from the ones that might be in your broader portfolio. Um, the one on the right is one that we did. Another common thing in marketing that dates well before Amazon is the before and after image. So if your product makes a big radical change, you might want to have a before and after image. Um, people love this. They love to see the before and after. They love to see what it will do. So here are some examples. You know, again, you want to probably try to keep your brand name in here, your brand product. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily, I think it's a good presentation, but I wouldn't do a shading like they did in the last one because it looks like it was um, influenced in the image more than it is a real image all the way across because the skin tones change with the teeth color. Cause, um, if your product has a cause or you stand for a cause or you have a give back program, you will want to highlight that. Tell the customers, make them feel good about buying your product. Share that information with your customers. Secondary images, give as a gift. So um, the common use of some products on Amazon is that they can be given as a gift. You can display that through your images or you can explain to the customer how to make it a gift because it's not necessarily the most straightforward process on Amazon, but you can remind them and, and give them a little bit of a hint of how to do that. What's included? So this is really important and it can be really difficult if you have a lot of components but you wanna let people know exactly what it is that they will be getting in this particular package. So you can spell it out with numbers, you can show them visually, you can have little call outs like the bonus here, um, but you definitely want them to know if they order this product, these are the things that they will get. Social proof. We're gonna talk about this a whole lot more in some of the other areas, but it is something you can add into your main image. If you have real customers in your, um, pictures, you might want to include social proof in it um, because it's the going back to the reading rainbow days of don't take, don't just take my word for it. All right. Um, product images, getting into the packaging changes. So one thing, especially during COVID, a lot of companies were having issues with their supply chain and we saw a lot of packaging updates that had to be done. So one of the things that you want to do because you're not, if you're using FBA, you're not fully in control of your inventory. You know, you send it into Amazon and it's not first in, first out at Amazon. You know, that inventory might be mixed for a period of time. So you want to set customer expectations correctly and you want to say, hey, we're making a packaging update. They're both good. You could get either during this time that we're making this change and you show them what the, the two options are that they might get. And generally, you don't see any complaints if you have these kind of images up. People do pay attention to them, and it does drive down complaints that people didn't get what they were expecting to get. Um, the last one, I do have a little story about this one. So my son, when he was about seven years old, Tom's made a update to the um, toothpaste that you see. And my son came out of the bathroom screaming about how bad it tasted and what did they do to it? And he was comparing the old bottle to the new bottle and pointing out the ingredients that he thought were different. The next thing I know, he's on the phone with the company, the 800 number, calling and telling them that what they did to this toothpaste was horrible and it needs to go back. Well, he apparently wasn't alone. <laughs> it really did tank their sales when they made that change. And now on their thing, they are saying the taste the kids love of is back. <laughs> so if you order this item, you have to worry you're not going to get that yucky one that your kids don't like. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So um, the next one is secondary images. So this is warranty and guarantee. I do have an asterisk here. And the reason why is really be careful with Amazon's rules and what they're saying about this at the time before you put something up. Um, if it's a warranty or guarantee from a seller, they're not going to accept it. If it's from the manufacturer, probably depending upon how you write it out, and if it's within the context of what their lawyers will approve, you can do it. Um, if not, you know, it might not be accepted. But if you do have a good warranty, you know, if it's definitely a product backed by the manufacturer, you might be able to get something like this through. And it is a value add to the customer. 
Secondary images, um, press award and accolades. So if you've been featured in something, if you've won awards, if you've gotten accolades from a public person, you can put that in here. On most of the content on Amazon, and we'll refer back to this, they make you source it. It has to be within the last two years. Um, any sort of, anything with quotation marks is not gonna get approved now with their AI. Um, so the viral soda, if they had put that in recently, they wouldn't get that approved. It would have to be the viral soda without quotation marks. <laughs> um, but, you know, if it's sourced in most content, you can get it approved. They are they are strict about it has to be within the last two years and that any quotes have to come from a public person, um, not just any old customer. So another thing you can do is you can do usage and education information. So you can tell somebody how to use your product if it's something people don't understand. If you have certain dosing information, you can put that in there. If it applies to certain types of use, you know, like the fishing pole, and it works for these particular fish, then you can put that information in there. Again, this all dates back to read your testimonials, uh, look at your return reasons, understand what it is that people don't get about your product, and then tie it back into this visual language of how you can instruct them, how you can improve your feedback and reduce your returns and make your customers happy. Um, so you will see sometimes on Amazon, typically from 1P, that they will try some things that we probably think that us as sellers won't get away with. <laughs> um, some of it, you know, the Amazon subscribe and save is their trademark. So if you try to put that in there, they probably will suppress it. Um, however, if you, if they're selling it themselves, you might see this pop up. Or if you're selling on 1P, you might be able to, to get this approved. Um, there might be other ways to kind of encourage that subscribe and save meshes if you have it. Another thing that they did a couple of years ago is they were trying to get you, especially if it's a product that if they bought it from a third party seller, there might be a questionable, you know, it might not be the best thing to buy from somebody. Say it was medical supplies or you know, maybe a food product. In that case, they were kind of pushing this ships and sold from amazon.com. I don't know if that you were to do it from ships and sold by the manufacturer that you would get away with it. Um, but it was something that you saw Amazon testing on their own content. So, all right, jumping in the next section, A plus content, enhanced A plus content. And before we go any further, I do want to preface this with there are two types of schools of thought about A plus content. And I, um, I'm not an absolutist, so I'm not going to tell you one way is better than the other way. Um, I will say it sort of depends on your own strategy, your own life cycle, and where you are in your marketing world, you know, in your sales world, you know, where you are in bestseller rank. So for A-plus content, there is the school of thought that everything should be SEO-driven. Um, what you're trying to do is get indexed for a lot of keywords. You want Google to surface and send you traffic by indexing it. You want Amazon to surface and send you traffic by indexing it. Um, all the way at the other end are the people who just want pure visuals. It's the best presentation to the customer. It's really going to help your conversion rate. And it's something that, you know, will really wow somebody. It'll be a scroll stopper as they go down the page. Um, and they will tell you, no, no, don't worry about those words unless they're back in alt tags. <laughs> you know, that's not important. Um, what's important is the visuals and the conversion rate. And the other people will be like, no, the traffic's more important. And I will say, if you're not getting traffic, think about the traffic. If you're a new seller, if you're somebody who, you know, you're just getting a product ranked, traffic might be the most important thing. If you're a huge CPG fan, uh, company, everybody knows about your product, you're getting traffic's not a problem. The only thing you're focused on is conversion rate. Then you might want to think more on the visual style. You know, it depends on where you are. Once you're kind of happy with how you're ranking for keywords, once you're kind of happy with where your traffic's at, but not happy with your conversion rate, then you might swing to that end of the spectrum. But I just want to preface that um, in case anybody has thoughts one way or the other. All right, so we have Amazon A plus content, um, and then we have enhanced A plus content. So we're gonna start with A plus content. 
So one of the things you want to do is you want to have professional photography um, and your branding colors, and you want to kind of tie that through your entire piece so that everything's on brand, everything looks uniform, it's telling a consistent story. And you kind of want to do that throughout your content. You want everything to kind of match the same font, same colors, same kind of look and feel um, so that you have a consistent brand story with your content. You want simple and short call-outs. Again, this is going to be on mobile as well as on desktop. So if you put a lot of small text in there, it's not going to be easily read. If you use icons, you want them to be effective. You want them to make sense to somebody and not be mystery meat. Um, the product comparison chart at the bottom is a fantastic addition because it allows you to cross sell products. You know, we typically like to see this on everything. However, on A plus content, that widget is not very mobile friendly. It has a scroll across the bottom. That is not good. The flip side of that is that the enhanced A plus widget, which is essentially the same thing, is mobile friendly. Um, so if you can move to that one, that one is a lot better mobile presentation. The, you know, you want to make sure you have large, easy to read logo. Never, ever, ever use the little Amazon logo thing at the top because it's a horrible rendering of your logo. Um, you want to mix product and lifestyle images. You, if you're interested in going for SEO, you want to make sure you have SEO text on the front. If not, um, or if, also include your SEO text in the back end, all tags. And then always remember to check and make sure it's mobile friendly. You know, it's a simple thing to do. Um, these are a bunch of goals. We'll get through them individually. So this is kind of a classic template. When they first rolled out A plus content, this is the type of template that you would see on Amazon. I think this particular brand did a great job of it. Um, they have some call outs. One of the most important visuals that you take away from this is this company has been around a long time. Look at that photo. It's dated. It's, you know, old school, but, you know, they're still surviving. They must be a great company because they've been around with us for so long. This would be kind of a graphics only type of presentation. So it's really there to reinforce the brand. You're not going to get a lot of mobile traction or I mean, a lot of SEO traction out of this, but it looks great. It presents great. You know, they very quickly go through some top level features and benefits. They've got a lot of great colors. They're about brand awareness conversion rate. Um, maximizing real estate. So going back to what we looked at before, where you're trying to squeeze out all your competitors on the page, well, maybe your goal is to have as long as possible A plus content. You can get away with five widgets um, on Seller Central uh, or um, regular A plus content. Um, enhanced A plus content, you can go up to seven. Sometimes you'll see one P sellers get a few more added in um, than you do on the side. This, they included a cross sell grid um, and they do highlight their features and benefits. It's probably a little too he text heavy. I don't think the customer's ever going to read that much text, but if their focus is SEO, it may be doing them well. This is when we did, um, we started we, we did this one both as kind of an SEO focused one where we're trying to get a lot of text because they were just launching and they wanted to rank for a lot of keywords and variations of keywords. So we, we spaced this out and um, we were trying to get that in there so that they would rank. We tried to humanize a rug product by bringing in children and pets and try to say that it's friendly for these people because um, as we all know, pets and kids make a mess of rugs. So we wanted to let you know that it's easy to clean up and convey that subtly. So it's something that we were doing. Another big thing you will see in the rug category is you have to explain the sizes and which size is good for what use. So you'll see that throughout content in this particular category. Scroll stopper. So sometimes a piece of um, A plus content is really meant to get you to stop scrolling and start to pay attention to something. In this case, they used one image and broke it up over all the content areas. So it's a big, bold image of their product that gets your attention. And they have some really basic features and benefits um, and they tease other products. They're not clickable, but you can see that they have a bigger product portfolio. 
And their goal on this would be, you know, brand awareness, getting your attention and conversion rate. This one is about going back to setting customer expectations, right? You want a happy customer. And one of the biggest um, frustrations for fashion companies is the high return rate, as I previously mentioned. So their main purpose on this particular thing is how does this item fit? You know, they do a good job of putting their logo in there and what the brand is, but they have a fit guide. They tell you exactly how this one fits. And then they have links to other products so that if that's not the fit you want, you can find the product from them that fits the way you're, you're looking for. This again is mostly graphics. So um, they are not looking for SEO on this or as much SEO. It highlights the brand. It explains why this product is different. It's a non-acetone nail polish remover. Um, how it's better for you, how to use it. So their goal is to educate and differentiate from the classic products that you might buy. This one is very simple. They are mobile first. You know, most of the content on this is just text or icon, but they want you to just kind of down scroll and see the individual points that they are selling. So they are looking strictly at this as mobile friendly and conversion rate. So this um, is kind of like a catalog style cross sell. So as I was saying before, Amazon, I think is pushing people towards the brand sell story for cross sell. You may not be able to do this as much as you could in the past. But one of the things we used to do, and this is one of ours, is that if somebody was starting with us and they had a really large product portfolio, we might divide up little groups of products and launch a catalog style piece of A plus content first. Um, the goal of that is that we have something up there. You know, we're telling Amazon that we've checked this box. And then we, for this, we're trying to increase the average order value. And we saw it did quite a bit um, as if you have products like this, where somebody might be buying more than one, if they know that they're available, you know, you might see a customer who were previously buying one might, you might see the average come up to people buying between three and 10 of your items because they see all of them. And they say, oh, I want that one too. So this is a good thing to do. It's just not always, they're not allowing you to add this widget multiple times at all times on new content. So it's being phased out, which I wish it wasn't because it's a great way to achieve that goal. Um, so A plus content examples. The other thing to remember is Spanish. You can do a copy of your A plus content um, with the Spanish version. This is one that we did. We had it with and without the text, but the text was there to rank for Spanish SEO words. Um, primarily, this product was based on Mexican botanicals. So we really wanted to make sure that that Spanish speaking audience was finding this product and it was surfacing for them. Um, there aren't too many places where you can get those Spanish words in, a little bit on the keywords on the back end, but this is a place that you can reach that Spanish speaking audience. So I don't have an example of this, but I have seen it. I've seen people that have done this before, and they focus their A plus content on answering Google's questions and answers. So what you would do is you would go out and you would find a Google question and answer that your content could answer, and who's if the current occupant of that answer um, has a lower domain score than Amazon, you might be able to win that if you write your content correctly. So you would go out, identify that question and write your SEO content in text, not images that Google will index and display. Um, the goal of this would be to increase offsite traffic. So we talked about A plus content. There's also premium A plus content. If you're on Vendor Central, Amazon typically wants you to spend about $500,000 to gain access to it. If you're on Seller Central, it's free, but you have to publish 15 pieces of A-plus content um, previously, like within the last year or two, and create a brand and create and publish a brand story. Um, it does not need to be really complex stuff. You can have different pieces of content by just simply switching links around, switching some text around, or switching some images around and republishing that content. So it doesn't have to be as hard as you think it will be to reach 15 pieces of A-plus content. Or if you only have five products, you can do that and republish it to get to that level. Um, the biggest benefit of premium A-plus content is it's mobile friendly. It presents better in mobile. Um, especially as we were talking about that product specs sheet. 
Additional benefits, you can include video. Sometimes it can be full screen, so it can be full width um, versus short width. It can have mobile hotspots, although right now it's not links to other things on Amazon, it just brings up text. And you can have scrolling images, so you can have a left right scroll. This is one for an air fryer. Um, they did a pretty good job. They break, they use this content to break the visual format. So, you know, surprise people, make it look different than what they've seen from other sellers. And they took one kind of background image and tied it through um, this so that you kind of scroll through and you feel like there's some sort of continuity to it. it shows the features and benefits. It shows how the products use. It educates and increases conversion rate. So I'm going to try clicking through and I hope it works. Um, this one, it may not be the most visually impressive, but I think this video that they did is one of the most clever things I've seen in a while on Amazon. What they did was they took three like social media style videos. So your uh, vertical versus your horizontal feature, and they ran them sequentially to do And I'm not, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I don't know if you could hear that, but they basically showed everybody um, sequentially, you know, three different, they showed everybody three different videos of people talking about their product in a way that seemed like kind of customer social validation of the product. It felt like influencers talking about the item. And I think it was, you know, again, don't just take my word for it. This is another piece of A plus content. It's a furniture brand. They show that it's got the inbound power and USB ports, you know, the different features of it, but it's it's kind of a nice presentation. And then the last one, and I'm not gonna load it today, but it is the lawnmower. Um, definitely check this out. This is a best in class piece of enhanced um, A plus content. They've got the integrated video, they've got features and benefits, they've got the side scrolling, and they cross sell the products. All right, we're gonna to jump to brand stories. So brand stories are a relatively new addition to Amazon. It's the first place where we can really call out our brand stores on Amazon and link over to it. Um, it also allows us, and again, why I think they're kind of suppressing a little bit of some of those images in the top um, or in the A plus content or the cross sell because they really want you to link to other items in your catalog and tell your brand story what's special about your brand here. Um, it is mobile friendly. It has the right left scroll. So some important things to know is you need a strong background image. You need something that's kind of not that distracting because images are going to be scrolling over it. So you don't want to distract from the top, top images. Um, you want to have your logo. If you have a brand proposition or even up here, you know, I've seen people have their awards or press call outs or anything like that, that you want to stick with somebody as they go through because the background image isn't going to change. Um, some brands, even when you get to the end, there's a little Easter egg that gets revealed at the end of it, which is kind of a neat thing to reward the customer for making it all the way to the end. So you want to include a logo. You want to tell about your brand. Who are you? Why are you selling this product? Why should I trust you? You want the link to the brand store. Um, you want to use cards and you want to try to get at least five cards in there. You can go long, but you want to at least reward them for hitting the right scroll button. Mix in lifestyle photos to break product grids. So I'm going to speed up because we are running short of time. But tell your brand story. Who are you? Why are you behind this brand? Why does it matter? It decommoditizes your product. So you're not just a nameless, faceless person in the void. You stand for something. Link to your brand store. So you could link to your categories. You could do this with individual product images, or you can do this by having something that represents that category. You can, again, highlight your product portfolio. You can also highlight your brand. Like we are immediately know that this is Fred Cap, that they've been around for a really long time, that they specialize in workwear. And they carry that through along with their logo for the entire piece. This is a very clever one. They took it down. I don't know why. 
but they um, were highlighting seasonal products and they were using their iconic cooler as the background to stop your scroll as you go down the page. And we're like, hey, what's this? So their goal is to cross sell products. If you have promotional messaging, you can put that in here. So this brand um, has a buy two, get one free to launch their new products. So they're driving conversions for new listings. Again, social media validation, you can put in your hashtags and get people to tell other people about your products. And if you have statistics that you can quote and are verified um, from a public source, you can put those in here as well. Again, same kind of thing. Statistics, they are highlighting the things that they do. They're explaining what the product is for people who don't understand it. And they are calling out their press coverage. This is one that we did, um, again, calling out their awards and press to try to highlight the product. If you have cause marketing, call that out. Tell people what you stand for. Why is your brand special? Make people feel good about purchasing from you. Posts. So why do we do posts? We're trying to build our brand pop followers. We're occupying real estate. We're trying to get exposure on our competitors because they will put them on your competitors' pages as well. You could test content. You could see which of your images has the highest engagement uh, rates before you decide to put it somewhere else. You can introduce new products and you can highlight promotions. So here are some examples. Um, I think a really important thing to note with posts is the language that you put in there is important because that's what will surface it on other product detail pages. Video ads. So um, video ads attract eyeballs. They elicit the click, they increase your traffic. They can raise your brand awareness. All that moving content attracts attention and you can quickly run through your value proposition. So what makes a good video? So you want a high resolution, um, images with movement of text or subject matter. So you want it to be moving. You want to catch people's attention. You want a logo or product packaging in nearly every shot so nobody forgets what they're looking at and then it's from your brand. You want it to run 15 to 20 seconds long. You want, oh, sorry. Open the... You want to focus on your bestsellers and your most common uses. You know, you don't want to get into something that's way out in left field for your brand or highlight a product that's not going to sell well. You want to end with a shop now message and you want to make sure the entire video works with no sound on um, and includes simple, straightforward text. I have some examples, but for the sake of time, we're not going to go through them. <laughs> brand stores. So brand stores, um, what makes a strong one? One is you wanna have a really strong, simple and on-brand header. You wanna make sure, because Amazon did us a great favor of putting a white button on a white background <laughs> to follow our brand, that you have that call out that gets people to follow your brand. Um, you can include press mentions and awards if you have them. Background videos are fantastic. So use them because they automatically load and they move. They don't have to actually be video. They can be text that's scrolling that tells you about the, you know, the key value proposition of your products, your brand. Um, they can just be little sparklies or something that just catches attention and feels different to somebody. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but you do want that to be happening. It could be scrolling through different plates of food if you're selling food products. Um, you want to make sure that your brand store highlights best-selling products or seasonal bestsellers. So this is the page that's going to get the most amount of traffic when you send people to the store. You can send people to sub pages. That might get some traffic if you're sending them through advertising or from your brand story um, or from offsite traffic. But you want to make sure that the pages that they're hitting, especially the home page, has the things that you're trying to sell. It doesn't look good, but I kind of like to also have add to cart directly here because this is the only place on Amazon that somebody is um, not going to have any advertisements for other products. So if you can get them to convert here, that's a great thing. And you want to make sure you can tie your visuals together with colors. Um, we have a whole bunch of goals for this. And the one goal that I'm not going to do is landing pages. 
So you can do it for advertising or offsite traffic, but we don't need to see that. So Amazon originally designed stores so that they have a good, that it's a catalog for your products. And they really want you to have your, your content areas listed on this page. It's not the only use of it, but it's kind of a classic navigation. One of the big movements right now is to change everything to product discovery. You can do a do-it-yourself product discovery like uh, Logitech has done. You can use the Amazon widget. If you are a one-piece seller enrolled in this program, possibly through Amazon Innovation Lab, um, but it will take you through a quiz of your products to isolate the products that it thinks are best for your needs. Or you can use a third-party software like Zuvu to go through and create this type of quiz to do product discovery. Um, the first, with any of these, the one thing to keep in mind is that if you make any catalog changes, it might be difficult to keep up with these quizzes um, from an administrative standpoint. Next, you can use your homepage to curate seasonal content, which is done with these Hey Dudes. You can highlight new arrivals. You can tell your brand story or your product story. Like this is the original weighted blanket. They were explaining what that is. You want to build your brand follower list, but you have to do that by having those call outs to the follow button. You can have a promotional focus. This can be hard to get approved if you're not using Amazon's featured deals widget. They really want to push everything towards that featured deal widget if you're going to do this. But you got like a 50-50 chance of other stuff getting approved. Um, and then social validation. So show real life people that are buying your products. Give them the hashtags that they can follow or join your brand. And that brand, oh, I just want to say, if you go to this page, this is the one that has a fun use of background video. So these little arrows appear and disappear and get bigger and smaller around the products. It's very simple. Measuring success. So um, to get in there, the most important thing to know about measuring success is that if it's going to be a true A-B test, you can't have any other concurrent changes happening at the same time. So you can't be running promotions. It can't have like seasonal ups and downs. You can't be making advertising changes at the same time because any of that is going to skew your results and you're not going to get, um, have a true understanding of what happened. And that tends to happen a lot because we're all doing all these initiatives concurrently. And really the only way you can kind of judge stuff is do all these things together, give us an overall lift in that particular point of view. But other ways you can measure success, <laughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, is PickFu um, is a software that you can buy an audience and you can run A-B tests on your content before you even publish them. So if you want to <clears throat> run two main images or you want to run your main image against the competitors, you can do that using this service and then you can make the tweaks that you need to make before you even publish the content. Um, Amazon has managed experiments, which you can run A-B tests on main images, now image order, that's new as of like the last week, titles, bullets, and A-plus content, and you could track metrics. So, um, you know, in general, if you want to do your own, you could go in, you could look at your conversion rate for an individual product or page, what kind of traffic you're getting, your glance views if you're on Vendor Central, um, your bestseller rank. Card abandonment, you can now get in there on an individual SKU and see what your card abandonment is on individual keywords. Are you ranking for more keywords? Are you being indexed for them? Um, those are the things to know if your content is working. And that's it. We can do some questions and answers. And I'm sorry it was long. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gwen. Uh, it's clear, I think, that you and the rest of the team at Lean Edge Marketing are content experts. Thank you so much for coming and sharing so many different um, ideas, best practices, examples of content. I know everyone got a lot out of this session. I certainly did. Um, just in the interest of time, I think we have maybe time for one question here, Gwen, and then we can go ahead and, okay. and break. Um, and people can email me individually. If they yeah, have. I've shared uh, Gwen's contact info in the chat. So if you do have questions for Gwen, feel free to reach out directly. If you have questions for IntentWise, you can reach out to me as well, Ryan at IntentWise.com. Um, one question that we have for you, Gwen, do you mm -hmm. find that optimizing A plus or adding A plus content is especially helpful in certain product categories compared to others? I mean, 
how I guess you could go through it a couple different ways. So in general, you know, there's a check mark from Amazon for just doing these things, right? So you're telling Amazon, okay, I added this particular thing, which is a point in your favor, kind of on the back end of Amazon. Um, depending upon how saturated your particular market is, you know, you may not feel like you get the same boost as if your market doesn't have a lot of A plus content, but it means you might be falling further behind. You know, so you might just have to do it to be on par with everybody else to institute it. But if you do it well, you should always see a good improvement because at a minimum, you're either building your brand repetition, reputation with the customer or you are um, increasing your own conversion rates in that product. You're convincing them why to buy your product. I mean, having this available to you and filling it out doesn't mean that you're going to have success, right? It's always about, comes down to, are you doing a good job marketing your product and brand in these particular areas? Makes perfect sense. Got to use all the tools that Amazon makes available to you. Yeah. And again, you can crowd out your competitors by just filling this stuff out. That's so, right. you know, that's one thing that it works in your favor. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gwen. Thanks for being our guest today. Um, yeah. Again, if anybody had any questions for Gwen, her contact info is on the screen. It's also in the chat. Um, and we will be sending out the recording and full slides for today's presentation early next week. All right. Thank you, everybody. This has been another episode of IntentWise Connect. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this one up. Thank you. <laughs>